lifelong athlete playing multiple sports, baseball, football, wrestling, track and field, and I excelled in all of them. And uh, now I'm excelling in MMA and tend to do the same thing. Good talk. John, I wanted to ask you, I mean, you've been at the top for so long. I mean, when you had... <laughs> we got a rough crowd today. <laughs> John, I mean, when you won your first world title, Dominic wasn't even a professional fighter yet. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, your motivation, your excitement for fighting guys like this that, you know, you haven't seen, you, you haven't necessarily watched, that weren't at the top, and they're just getting there. Is it more difficult to, to face guys like this? Uh, it's good to see you guys today. How are you guys? Uh, that's good. That's good. God bless you guys. Glad you guys made it today. Um, I'm super excited. Like Dominic, I'm, I'm fired up, I'm pumped up, ready to destroy. Um, what was your question exactly? What? You know, I mean, when you were a world champion, he wasn't even fighting professionally yet, so I'm curious if it's difficult to get excited for, for you know, it's not like a marquee name or a, yeah. somebody that you've seen for years. No, it's not difficult to get excited. You know, Dominic's starting off this whole thing with talking about party favorites and bringing up my past and stuff like that. It, I, it's, it was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Somebody who's tall. People think I'd be bad against tall people, so I'm excited for this challenge. He's undefeated. Um, so, yeah, I, this guy tickles my pickle. And, uh, and, uh, and I cannot wait. Pause. I cannot wait to put my hands on it. You still got quite a bit of time to prepare for him, but I'm curious, in your initial breakdown, your initial analysis of him, is there anything that he does that's more dangerous, that's more concerning than, than past opponents that you faced? Um, he's an elite level athlete. I, I believe I am as well. Um, he has a lot of power. And, and his left hand, um, but to call him different than anybody I've faced before, I don't know if I can do that um, at all. I've, I've faced so many people with uh, way more advanced striking. Um, I've faced so many people with extreme knockout power, and um, I just gotta go out there, respect him, believe, and, and just do what I do. And just one last one, John. I know you're not looking past Dominic at all, but Israel Adesanya is the name that keeps coming up. And one day, you say, I'm not talking about this joker. And then 30 minutes later, you're tweeting about him again. You know what I mean? So give me an idea of you know, your thoughts on Israel Adesanya, a potential matchup, what you just think about him as a fighter. I am, uh, it's unfortunate that me and him have to take things this way. Um, at the end of the day, if Israel wanted to fight me, that would be a gigantic fight for the sport. Um, a lot of people talk about, well, you know, why are you forcing Israel to go to light heavyweight? You never went to heavyweight. There, there's like a, there's a gigantic jump between me and the heavyweights. Me and Izzy, we're only 15, 20 pounds apart. So if Izzy really wanted to fight me, he would do it. Izzy's a pussy. And, and there's, there's really no way around him. There's no way around it. So, and as far as I'm being in my head with the internet stuff, it's just fun. It's a lot of fun. The fans enjoy it uh, when we trip back and forth, and I like to keep the people excited. So that's all that's about. He is not in my head. Um, he's not in my head at all, actually. I'm just, I'm, I'm liking the energy that he brings to the sport, and I'm, I'm liking being a part of it. And uh, like I said, if he wanted to fight me, he totally would. <laughs> Thanks, Sean. Caitlin, I want to ask you, I mean, you felt that you deserved this opportunity and that you were kind of knocking on the doorstep for a long time. Now it's here, you're up on the big stage, you know, two all-time greats over there. I mean, what's your emotion finally getting this opportunity? Hi. Um, I'm super excited to be here. Um, you know, I feel like, okay, everyone's like, are you excited it's finally here? And I'm not trying to, like, sound cocky, but I just knew that this would be, this would come and this would be my next step, so... Getting this fight, um, it's a long time coming, and it, I wasn't super surprised, but um, I'm excited that it's here, and I'm, I'm really thankful for the opportunity. Yeah. A lot of people certainly think that Valentina is one of the most well-rounded women's fighters in the game right now. I'm, I'm, I'm curious, you know, as you start to break her down, you know, similar to asking Dominic, what is it that you think you bring to the table that she hasn't seen so far, that she hasn't faced, that, that you can upset her? 
Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of people really talk about how dominant she is, and she's been a very great champion. And I, you know, even before I was in the in the same division, I loved watching her fight. And uh, a lot of people think of her as a very good striker, but I think that she's been very impressive with her wrestling and her takedowns. So, um, yeah, I mean, I'm comfortable on the ground. I'm a brown belt in jiu-jitsu. I think I'm probably the best grappler that she's ever faced. And she hasn't faced anyone with my style. I move, I don't just stand there and just go one to one to running forward like her last few opponents. Um, I utilize a lot of footwork and head movement, and I can keep that piece up for five rounds. Um, I prefer a five round over a three round. So, so yeah, I'm excited. We'll see how this works. Thank you. Yeah. And then if I could for Valentina, please. You've, you've had an interesting year, right? I mean, it started out, you know, a knockout of the year, one of the greatest highlights of all time. And then the last title defense, maybe not as exciting, even though it was very dominant. So I'm curious for you right now, in these title defenses, what is important? Is it just making sure you get wins and hanging on to that title? Or do you feel an obligation or a desire to want to have those, you know, knockout of the year moments? First of all, um, no offense to Caitlin. But you know, all my opponents, everyone, they were thinking before facing me that I didn't face no one with the same style. So, this is the point. Um, Caitlin, she is a well rounded fighter. She a um, good striker. As she says, she knows brown game. But it's fine. It's okay. I hope that she will bring everything from her because this is what I want from the fighter. This is what I want from the opponent, and uh, what I'm gonna do, dominate the fight, the same way. I will prepare myself in my best shape and do the great job as I, this is a my, my mindset. Not to go to the fight just to have fun. No, only to win, only the victory was important for me. And hey, my last thing for you, Valentina, uh, Listen, I think you're becoming one of the biggest superstars in the sport. I know you can't look past this fight, but what are your goals for, for 2020? What do you want to accomplish in the sport, whether it be other divisions, multiple, you know, fights, to pick the opponents? What is it that you want to accomplish? I want everything. Everything. Doesn't matter what. Um, I don't know. I don't know what happened tomorrow, and you want me to say about all 2020. I don't know. Um, it's very hard to say, but I know for sure I'm professional martial artist and truly fighter from the top to the bottom and I know that martial arts it's not just my work it's not just my career it's I am martial artist martial arts it's in my way and I will be here forever right down the line here a couple questions for John Jones I know the last two times that we've spoken your last two fights there wasn't a lot of trash talk, a lot of bad blood, and you said that was a welcome change, you know, because you weren't used to that. Now it seems like we're, we're right back in that, so how did, how did this bad blood start? Well, Dominic wins his last fight. I don't know where, I've never met him in person, I've never shaken his, the guy's hand. And, and the guy, instead of just being cordial or just being a martial artist and showing a, a degree of respect, he gets on the microphone, yelling and immature, and goes, I don't need a, a party favorites, I need the world title. And that's how it started. Um, but it's all good, we're here now. He got what he asked for, and uh, I don't wanna put my hands on it. It's gonna be great. So you're upset with him. Uh, last time we spoke also about up and coming contenders, you spoke very highly of Dominic Reyes. I'm wondering, you sound like you had a tremendous amount of respect for him. Is that still the case? Um, I, I know nothing about him, honestly. I know nothing about him. I, I see the, the games he wants to play with the, uh, with the insults, and uh, I don't really care. I don't really care uh, at the end of the day. My job is to destroy this dude and start focusing on uh, 2020, you know what I mean? But like, we're gonna have a great 2020 and it's gonna start off by destroying Domino. Um, I don't know, hey, hey, hey. Uh, this guy. This guy. This guy. Hell of a drug, huh? That's stupid. That's gonna follow me for a long time, huh? But, uh, yeah, man, I don't know what I wanna do with him, man. I, I don't know if I wanna knock him out, choke him out. But, uh, dude, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. I promise you guys. I got one more for you, John. So, this is your first time fighting in the great state of Texas. What took so long? Are you excited? 
I am excited to fight in Texas, being a, being a guy who lives in Albuquerque, you know, a lot of my friends will be able to get over there. I love Texas, man. You guys are gun toters. I'm a big gun toter. Man. Fan of the Second Amendment. Hell yeah. You guys are my type of people. We're going to have a lot of fun. Who's got the next question? Go ahead. Yeah, uh, back in the, uh, back when I, she, she asked me about tweeting in September about having a big fight announcement. Um, I was trying to get a sleeping meal change fight. I thought, I thought that maybe it would happen, but instead uh, we have Steve A DC three. Um, but at the mo in the mo at the moment I was so ready to go heavyweight and uh, and stick my fans in some of those big folks. I, I do feel like Dominic has everything to win in this situation. Um, you know, he's relatively unknown, uh, but that's why I'm gonna. That's that's why I'm training as hard as I, I can. You know, I was 240 last week. I'm 230 this week. I'm taking him extremely seriously. I watch his fights every single day, um, and uh, because he's unknown, you know, people would expect someone in my position to take him lightly, and that's where guys you know, in my position would fall. Um, you know, I'm. I'm reading a, a book called uh, Relentless right now, and uh, it talks about being a, a, a cleaner. And I, I'm trying to be a cleaner, dude. I want to, I want to, I want to dominate for years and years to come. And uh, so I got to take him very seriously. I read that book like three years ago. So it's a good book. It's a good book. It's a great book. I'm glad you did. I'm reading it right now. It might have helped me get here, to be honest. You know, I'm reading it right now in this training camp, leading into beating your ass. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen, Johnny Boy. Not gonna happen. Great, great response, Malcolm. <laughs> <laughs> and this one's for Dominic. It's already been tweeted that uh, you reported that there was a spying out again. I'm curious if there was, and can you elaborate on that, and what happened after? I don't know. Is there a spy in my camp, John? You're not that important, Malcolm. <laughs> We'll, we'll see what happens though, man. We'll see how important I am when I'm running back. But we'll see how important I really am. I'm taking you serious, boy. I'm taking you serious. You know that. I'm taking you serious. Or you're a pawn in this game, bro. I've been talking about it for a long time. Like DC, like all of them, bro. You're a pawn in this game. I'm a pawn? You're a pawn in this game, bro. How so? You're just a piece of the puzzle, bro. I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to be great, bro. You're just a part of it. You're a small part of it. As am I. And you're just another pawn in my puzzle. That's fine. Everyone's undefeated before they fight you, bro. You know they're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. They're not. Trust me. I fought one undefeated guy. Trust me, bro. That, well, that doesn't matter. Daniel Cormier. Does it have to do Dan, with Daniel Cormier was undefeated. What does Daniel Cormier have to do with me? Brian Bader was undefeated. What does Brian Bader have to do with me? They're not special, bro. Oh, I'm just, I'm the one. I promise you. You're the one. You, you knocked out Chris Wyman. He's been knocked out so many times. You know? <laughs> Good job. When was the last time you knocked anyone out? Ever. I don't have to knock out people. I don't have to knock out people. I have a, I have a gigantic suicide. So you say I don't have to knock out people, but no, listen, you listen, the, 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 the only way, okay. we all know, the, okay, only, John. the only way you can possibly win this fight is, is, is to catch me with, with, with the left. We all know that. I can submit you. I can outwrestle you. I can kickbox you to death. Bro, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, Dominic. All right. We'll see. You know it. We'll you're see, one tree pony. I I don't know. You're a one tree pony. You, you think you know? Bro, we saw your headlight. Bro. It was straight left. Straight left. Straight left. <laughs> hey, home runs work, baby. Yeah, they do. They do. At a certain level, they do. Yeah. This level. Good response, Dominic. Does somebody have another question? Yeah. Who's uh, next? Right here in front of you. Uh, for Dominic. I was wondering, uh, John's last fight in the Xavier Santos was a uh, pretty close fight. Was there anything that you could have learned, do you think, from that fight that you could apply when you fight John? Oh, you could always learn something from your opponents when they fight. I mean, but at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter. Um, when we fight each other, it's, we're adapting to each other. 
what he did, he's passed, but I didn't want to pass test his matter on five nine. I'm just uh, for Valentina, quick. Um, the other day, Amanda Nunes was asked who her toughest opponent was, and she said it was you. And I was wondering, do you think at some point down the line you guys will, will fight again? As I said, and I every time say that this potential fight um, could happen because you know it's um, so much out. It's not depends on me, it's not depends on her. It's uh, gonna happen sometimes, I don't know where, I don't know when. Um, right now I'm focusing in my weight division flyweight because I was waiting this opportunity for so long. I was competed against like bigger opponents, uh, heavier, longer arms, legs, and now I have opportunity finally to fight with the same size opponent. But about the third fight, uh, yeah, I think if it's happened, it's gonna happen in the perfect place, perfect time, and the perfect opportunity. Dan, what do you think? You think we'll see a third fight between Valentina and Amanda Nunes? Um, yeah, anything's possible. I was talking about it the other day. I mean, if you look, if Weili Zhang can continue to dominate, and then you got Valentina, and you got Amanda, there could be a lot of movement there with, with, with all three of them, which could be fun later on down the line. Another question for you, Dana. Um, last night was Quintet, fun grappling tournament that was on Fight Pass. Uh, Cup Swanson tore his ACL and his meniscus in that tournament. And I was wondering, is that a, a danger? Is that a risk for yeah, UFC fighters? Like, I, was, I was literally sitting right behind him when it happened. It's horrible and, and, you know, these grappling things for them are supposed to be fun and go out. And, but when you have some of the best in the world grappling against each other, these are the type of things that happen. I mean, that wasn't really a submission that he had him in, and, uh, and his knee popped out. So uh, he's getting an MRI today, and we'll see where he's at. Hopefully it's something that just needs some physical therapy and not surgery. And, uh, you yeah, know, I hate it. Hate it. And uh, just a couple things for John. Um, you tweeted last week, I think it was, um, that you're, you're walking around heavier this camp, and, but you feel the same strength-wise and agility-wise. I was wondering, is there any reason why you're doing that, and do you think that move to heavyweight could be coming sooner rather than later? Yeah, after this Tiago Santos fight, I was at a place where um, I wanted to start entertaining the heavyweight division. Um, I've been wrestling my brother my whole life. I've been going with Andre Alaski and Overeem and all these big guys my whole career, and uh, I've always done well. You know, at 240, I, I moved just as fast as I do at um, light heavyweight. My versatility, I realize, is not things that most heavyweights would do, spinning things, flying knees, things like that, and I feel really good. I think the time is going to be really close. I wouldn't be surprised if it happened this year. Uh, well, I'm sorry, in 2020. Um, yeah, it was 240 not too long ago. Right now, I'm living with my nutritionist, and uh, I, I built a home gym in my garage. And, uh, and I feel really, really good right now. I'm 230 with a six pack. And uh, I just feel like, I feel like I'm gonna be bigger than Dominic, just more athletic, just more hungry, more, more to prove, more on the line. This, this shit means so much to me, this is my life, dude. This isn't like, just, just something. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it. And do you think Heavyweight could be next set after this fight? Um, I think it's a, a very strong possibility. Absolutely, absolutely. There's always going to be someone next, you know. I, I feel as if I've cleared the division, and uh, I'm waiting around. I'm taking on new challenges. I'm not sitting on the title. I'm not hiding from anybody. I, I chose Dominic because he appears to be the best out of all my contenders. And uh, dude, I'm, I'm I'm just ready to, to just take over the world, man. Really. One more question. Um, Colby Covington fights on Saturday. And you go way back with him, and a lot has been made, you know, is this an act, is what he's doing, is, is it real, is it really him? Yeah. You've known him for a long time, was that yeah. him back then? Yeah, Colby's an habitual liar, at the end of the day. <laughs> he, he really is, I mean, he, he's told the fans that we lived together for two years, we lived together for one semester. Um, he's just, I've made a lot of mistakes, and a lot of people don't consider me to be a good person, but, I mean, coming from me, Colby's a really bad person, he really is. <laughs> He really, really is. I mean, it, there's no coincidence that you know, Tyrone Wilby got to know him and hates him. Uh, Masvidal got to know him and hates him. I got to live with him and, and really don't like him. Um, if any of you guys got to know him, man, he, he really is a rotten person. I think the, the community is going to start to see it over the years. 
All right, I'm going to square these guys off here right now, and uh, thank you, everybody. Thanks for coming.